Is it possible to overclock a laptop? I'm going to give it a shot. I'm Jim Setzer with Images by Design, and uh, I'm going to try to overclock this laptop. Now, if you've clicked on this video, you probably really understand overclocking quite well. So why don't you skip ahead about a minute and we'll catch up with you there. Overclocking is really the process of speeding up your computer. Computers work on very discrete instructions. Do this step, this next step, this next step, kind of like this. And the speed at which they do the next step is governed by a bunch of clocks, crystals inside your computer that govern the speed of your computer CPU, your computational processing unit, your graphics processor, your RAM, and a bunch of other things that are going on inside your computer. Speed up the clock, you speed up the performance of the computer. Quite simple, right? But the problem is that when every little increment you speed up the computer, you generate a lot more heat. Now, we love modern laptops because they're thin and they're lightweight and they're very portable and they're relatively quiet and the batteries last all day. But when it comes time to dealing with the design compromise of performance versus heat dissipation, all those features are really fighting against us. It's very difficult in a very small, flat form factor, semi-quiet, semi-light design to be able to get rid of a whole lot of heat. So when laptop designers choose processors and other components, they got to keep thermal management in mind. And a lot of times your computer has a lot more processing power available to it that you simply can't use because the computer is clocking at a lower rate than it absolutely uh, is possible. Overclocking, the process of ramping up those clocks a little bit to get more performance, is nothing new. Desktop computers do it all the time. Back here in the studio, of course, I've got big powerful computers with nice big graphics cards that can do 4K rendering and 3D animations all day long. But as you can see, these boxes are big and they're noisy and they're heavy, not at all portable. So if I'm shooting on location, maybe the client wants dailies or uh, perhaps I just want to work at home for whatever reason. I, those are the situations where I want to squeeze every ounce of power I can out of that laptop so I can do, you know, light loads and be able to uh, do them effic efficiently, effectively, wherever it is I happen to be. So I thought I'd give it a try making kind of a, a non-invasive way to get more performance out of the laptop by allowing me to overclock it. And I'm going to do that, I think, by kind of helping out the, the laptop's existing heat management system. Now, all laptops have some kind of way to bring in ambient air from the room. These vents right here on this laptop do that. This one's got a little, looks about 40 millimeter fan right here to pump that air through. Probably passes some, some fins, some heat pipes, some radiators of some sort, and then it exits all that hot air out the side. So I started with this particular laptop trying to figure out what all that was and after firing it up and making it do a little bit of work, I quickly realized that the intake vents are here along the bottom and the output vent is, you can't see it, but it's, it's in the gap between the base and the hinge for the screen. So what I want to do is I want to take and push much, much more air into these holes to help that heat management system dissipate the heat back out, kind of like a supercharger works on a car. So I went digging around in my parts bins and I came across these little guys. These are little 40 millimeter fans, box fans, that happen to be USB. That's gonna make this project a lot simpler because I can just plug them into a USB hub or even into ports on this laptop. So now the trick is take something that looks like this, a 40 by 80 millimeter rectangular set of fans and push all their air into this long, thin set of slots. Now for me, my, des my design was to take and 
go into a, a CAD program called SketchUp, make a, an air shroud that would force all that air from the vans into the laptop and be able to cool that thing much more quickly. So I designed it up and I printed it out and here's what I came up with. It's literally just a funny looking box. It's got a long, thin hole on one side that'll fit up against those vents on the back of the laptop. And then it's got a 40 by 80 millimeter hole on this side to be able to put those fans in and make it work. Now, many of you aren't gonna have access to a 3D printer, but you can, uh, you can do, at least the experimentation part. With some readily available stuff you might have around the house or at the local grocery store. As an example, here's a 50 cent piece of plasticware from the grocery store. Uh, if I had one that literally covered up all the intake vents on here, I could do that. And I could just cut some holes in the side of the thing and mount my fans and I could at least run this test to see if this is going to work. Anyway, let me cobble this all together. Um, see if that is forcing air through there and then we'll uh, pick up and run a create and run a series of tests to see if uh, this uh, solution is actually going to help us out. Now you might be saying, well, I don't really care about the heat. Why don't I just overclock my computer and just let it cook in his own juices? But I, you know, I just want the performance when these devices stay too hot, too long, their life expectancy drops considerably. So they have these throttling devices in here. When the, when the devices realize that the temperature is too hot, they literally tell the clock to slow down, therefore creating less heat, allowing the system to cool down to a certain level, and then they'll let the clocks ramp back up again. You still might say, Jim, I, I, I don't care. I'll, I'm gonna eke out a little bit more performance. And the answer is actually, I think what's gonna happen is as you start to overclock but not deal with the thermal problem that that creates, you're gonna end up with performance that's actually lower than if you had just not overclocked at all. Once you have a cooling solution to test out, you're gonna to need to enable overclocking in your computer. This is done down in the system BIOS. If you're not sure how to do this in your system BIOS, check your computer manufacturers website, their support site, maybe their support forums to walk you through this process. Next, you're going to need a piece of software to be able to adjust the overclocking parameters for your computer. I picked this one called Afterburner by the motherboard company MSI and its graphical interface is pretty good. Here it shows me that I can adjust both my core clock, which is the base clock from which the graphics processor and the CPU are derived, and the memory clock, so that adjusts the speed of how memory, RAM, reads and writes. In its base configuration, you can see it's been adjusted by no value. And then I created four different profiles, mild to wild, that slowly up these parameters to the point where I felt that I could still safely overclock and not crash the system. Now I'm gonna run through a series of workloads that tax either the CPU or the GPU or both in different ways and I'm going to test it under these different clocking scenarios, base clock and these four overclocking setups. First by itself with just the stock cooling system and then I'm going to rerun the tests with my new turbocharged fan assembly attached. As you can see here from this first video render, the base clock test ran at three minutes and 35 seconds. As I continue to overclock more and more, the render actually took longer and longer time. So this seems to support my hypothesis that the more you overclock without dealing with the thermal problem, you're going to get even worse performance than baseline. Now let's rerun this set of renders, but this time adding the fan to the back of the laptop. And as you can see, I got better performance. Uh, in this particular case, my overclocking scenario three gave me the best overall time. So between the base clock, no fan, and the best time I was able to get with the overclocking three scenario and the fan attached, I got a 31.1% improvement in this basic video render. Now this particular video render was pretty simple, not a lot of transitions, not much color grading. So it was far more CPU intensive than GPU intensive. 
if I pick a different video to render, one that does have a lot of color grading, a lot of correctors, a lot of transitions, a lot of things that are typically passed off to the GPU in my particular case, and I do these same set of scenarios, I actually found that I got an overall 41.8% improvement from base clock, no fan, to my best time with the overclock four scenario in this case. Well, I do a lot of video rendering for my clients. I also do some amount of work in 3D animation environments like this one called Blender. Blender provides a number of benchmark blends for people to test things out with. This BMW rendering is going on here and you can see it's can be relatively CPU or GPU intensive. How did that fare in our configuration? You can see from this graph without a fan, and continued to overclock. It got a little worse, it got a little better, but it pretty much flattened out. Adding the fans to it, you see it's again a significant improvement in render times, 20.8% overall. Sometimes it's helpful to see how a particular computer compares to other configurations out there on the market. I downloaded Cinebench off the internet, I ran it to give me kind of this uh, rating, how the system fared against some standard configurations and um, with the stock configuration, no fans added, the, the performance was kind of flat. Went down, of course, as the I tried to overclock more, just like uh, we've discovered in other configurations. And I found that when I added fans and reran those tests, there was still a very good improvement in overall performance by adding the fans and overclocking. Okay, if you're a gamer and you're interested in things like frame rate and playability, this is the test for you. This is the Unengine Heaven test. They have a number of different scenarios, but it really scores a computer on how well and how playable the computer is under certain scenarios. And you can see base clock, no fan. My, my score here was 635, and it slowly went down as the more I tried to overclock. But uh, adding the fan, allowed me to improve my score to the point I went from 635 all the way to 877 at the end. That is a significant improvement. The experience was much smoother. Uh, colors were sharper. Uh, things came into focus a lot more cleanly. All right, so now that I've proven I can get significant performance out of overclocking and cooling my laptop, where do I go from here? Uh, I think I'm gonna design and build a much more low profile shroud, something I can take with me and throw in my camera bag and not take up as much space and maybe make it a little bit stronger so it doesn't get cracked and beat up along the way. I think I'm also going to design a thermal circuit that will be able to detect that ambient air coming in and ramp up my additional fans as needed so that uh, they only get really loud when they're really needed and I don't have to worry about plugging and unplugging those things. That'll be a video for further down the road. Anyway, if you liked this video, you found it interesting and helpful, please do give it a like. If uh, you wanna see that follow-up video later on when I've gone from a prototype to a working product, uh, do subscribe and share in your comments below if you came up with an interesting solution to cooling your laptop in, in a significant way. For Minges by Design, I'm Jim Setzer. Have a fantastic day.